Fantasy Flight Games started in the mid-90s. It's always been based out here in Roseville, Minnesota. It was founded by Christian Peterson. We've grown from there to now we're over 90 employees and we have over 70 active product lines. We have licenses from everything from Star Wars, which we're working on right now, Lord of the Rings. We've worked with the folks at Epic Entertainment on Gears of War. And then we have our own proprietary products that we've developed in-house. Descent Journeys in the Dark, Rune Wars, Rune Age, those all take place in Tirnoth, which is a world that we've developed internally. A lot of the games that we may have played as when we were very young were, were fairly simple. Um, they didn't offer all that much uh, depth, not in gameplay, the materials were fine, but uh, we weren't looking for really deep experiences. A lot of these games are experienced games. You can get involved in games that will last several hours. You can get involved with games that will last over multiple sessions. They're accessible, but the experiences that a player gets is much more, uh, much more intense, whether it's fantasy or science fiction or horror. You know, we're trying to deliver experiences, not just games, right? It's, it's one thing to have a board and roll some dice and whatever, and that can be a lot of fun. But one of the things that we try to do with all of our games is to deliver an immersive narrative experience. So very early on, the company was fortunate enough to uh, form a partnership with Blizzard Entertainment. And we were a very early licensee on World of Warcraft. And it brought us to the attention of a lot of other companies as people saw the success that we had with that game and working with Blizzard. And it was a really great partnership for us over several years. Uh, we also did a StarCraft game with them as well that was very popular and very well received. And what we look for in a license is we look to develop partnerships. You know, we like to do deals that have like a five-year horizon so that we can really deliver a long immersive experience to the fans. Once we build a prototype of the game and we have a good working engine, we'll go out and play the game with them and get their input and make sure that they're as happy about the game as we are. For Civilization, for example, we, we took the game out to their headquarters, sat down with the team. They'd sit down and say, well, maybe if the wonders came into play this way, that might really help the game a lot and they were great to collaborate with. And they sent us back pages of notes afterwards that were really helpful. They were not overbearing at all. And they were very open and enthusiastic about the ideas that we presented. So you don't want to just try to replicate the experience that the video game delivers because you're never going to be able to do that in an analog experience. So you want to deliver an experience, a touchstone to that brand, that game, in a way that is exciting and innovative and fun for the people who enjoy the video game but you're not just trying to replicate that experience. So we look to work with licensing partners for games that we're gonna love ourselves on properties that we're crazy about as well. The fans of those video and computer game franchises discovered us initially through those games, but then saw the whole catalog of games that we had as well that were as, as big and as immersive as the ones that led them into us initially. And it was like discovering a whole new world for them. The interesting thing between the parallel between the video game industry and the tabletop hobby industry is they share a lot of similar genres. With the amount of material that's out there nowadays, uh, the really strong releases, um, the questions that I have for an individual are, well, what, what are your interests? I mean, do you dig sci-fi? If so, you know, we have Battlestar Galactica, which is a, a license and a game that encapsulates the experience that you may know from the show, but it places you squarely in the chair as one of the characters. Anyone who enjoys engaging narrative is a potential board game player. It's been pretty amazing to see the growth of the overall hobby games industry and our part in that over the past several years as more and more people kind of discover these experiences where it used to be people talked about Dungeons and Dragons being played in people's basements um, have just continued to grow and grow over the years and more and more people are are coming to understand that these are not hobbies just for kids anymore that these are big deep epic experiences for for people that you can experience for your whole life so here at our headquarters here in Roseville Minnesota we have a very interesting setup we have a set of offices where we develop the games and work on the production of the games. And then adjoining that office space, we have our event center, which is open to the public six days a week. And it's a fantastic place for us to just celebrate our games and some other great games in the industry as well. Folks come with Tuesday through Sunday and they bring games to play or they rent games that, that we offer here at the event center. And it also for the staff is one of the best employment perks for us because after hours we'll come here as well and, and we get to to engage with the customers that that we sell product to 
but as fans, as other, as players. One of the goals we had with the event center was to remove the glass. You know, what's the soul of today's gamer look like? Well, we, we know them, we, we hang out with them, and I think that just informs us without any ulterior motive. What I found are folks coming to share their excitement with either rediscovering board games, and they come from a, from a hardcore video game player background. The worlds, I think, are converging, um, and that hobby board games are, are, are definitely gaining visibility. And over and over again, the difference that is described is an experience of sitting around a table with friends to have an adventure, whether it's role playing or some other hobby game experience. So obviously the core of our business is for people to be sitting around a table playing games face to face. But um, we realize in today's world where people travel, they move a lot of different places, that that's not always possible and the digital experience is becoming more prevalent in the ho even in the hobby games industry. Uh, we ourselves have taken games like Elder Sign, which is a very successful board game for us, and we've turned it into a digital game that you can get on, the, uh, on iOS or Android. And this goes from, it's really interesting from the fact that we have a lot of licensed products where we work with licensors to make sure that they're happy with the game, but then we turn around now and with our own internal digital studio, then they're working with the main part of the business, making sure the game is fitting what we want to do. So we're kind of sitting on the opposite side of the chair than we normally do with a, a, our licensing partners. We also have some other digital licenses where we've licensed some properties out that we'll be making announcements about soon. So now we're getting a chance to look at things from a licensor point of view now too, which is very interesting and changes the dynamics some a little bit. We put in a huge amount of effort to produce what it is that we produce. Everyone here works unbelievably hard to, to make these products happen. The level of expectations that we have for our own products are incredibly high. We set the bar incredibly high. So the artwork is spectacular. The level of sculpting is always being improved. And, and then the level of, of gameplay is, is never compromised. The designers or the developers that are involved um, make these games to be just incredible examples of a sci-fi epic game or fantasy adventure game. At that point, then we in marketing uh, will go and try and connect with the folks out in the world that, that we hope will love it too. We don't pander to maybe what the lowest common denominator, but we try to, to make really exceptional examples of unique experiences. We put 110% into making it look as great as it can be and then we put, put it out there.